Hello everyone, welcome to EduTap and welcome to ERD Static Series. So today we will be completing your lecture number 8. Okay? But student, I have to tell you something that I have made some changes here. According to the uh, this timetable, according to the schedule, we must be covering today farm and agriculture engineering. But when I analyze the previous year paper, so I came to know that from this chapter your uh, tillage implement are very important because mostly questions are asked from primary and secondary tillage implement and that I have already covered in the previous ARD static series right so in order to avoid the repetition of the com content what I did today I brought up some another topic that is irrigation okay because this is also important for exam point of view so today we will be discussing about irrigation irrigation management then different terminology which are very important which many of you have the doubt because what is the seepage what is infiltration what is percolation what is leaching and in all that you have doubt right so today we will be discussing all these terminology and also irrigation project which are very important because two three questions are asked from irrigation project also from nabad grade in nabad grade so today we will be instead of this we will be covering irrigation and different terminology related to irrigation and for this what you can do you can just refer to the previous ERD static series there I have covered the all the tillage implement and you can just refer to that video and you can cover this from there okay now moving on to the today's video but before that I have to answer the question that I have given you in the previous video which was contour trenches are suitable where the slope of land is so right answer here is 33 percentage clear so chalo moving on to the today's topic that is irrigation so what is irrigation basically basically irrigation is the application artificial application of water to the crop in order to supplement your groundwater or rainfall requirement see we have the natural source of water we have the natural source of uh, water available that uh, water that is available to the plant right for example plant can take up the water from the ground uh, ground water then plant can use the rainfall water but in apart from that there is a requirement there is a, some additional requirement of the crop that we fulfill through irrigation clear so irrigation is basically application of water artificial application of water in order to supplement the groundwater and rainfall clear so that is about the irrigation then moving on to the irrigation management what is irrigation management basically it is applying water according to crop need we don't uh, deliberately uh, we don't uh, apply the water according to the demand of the crop according to the need of the crop we apply irrigation right so that is your irrigation management that is applying water according to the need of the crop that is your irrigation management then your irrigation management for effective irrigation management there are some factors which you should look up, look for and what are they first is your soil physical and chemical properties now very important you must know what is this uh, property what is the physical property of soil what is the chemical property of soil in order for in order uh, to provide irrigation in order to provide effective irrigation to the crop okay because different soil have different requirement of irrigation some soil might need more water some soil might need less water right so according to the uh, soil physical and chemical property we apply irrigation then we have biology of the crop According to the biology of the crop, the irrigation management is also done because few uh, crops are there which require more water as compared to the other. For example, rice, for growing 1 kg rice, we required approx 3000 liter of water. Now, every crop do not require this much amount of water, right? So, that is why your irrigation management will depend upon the biology of crop as well. Uh, depending upon the crop, you will give the water right then quantity of available water available everywhere uh, you can you can see that we have dry land agriculture also okay their water availability is less right so it also our irrigation will also depend upon the quantity of water that we have within us right we that we can apply that we can apply to the crop so that will your irrigation man, management will depend on the quantity of water see if few areas has less water so they will give uh, this water to the crucial stages of the crop okay they will not just according to the recommendation they will not follow the recommendation they will they will have to save this water for the crucial stages when the crop requirement is highest for the water so quantity of water available is will depend karega then time of application of water see uh, every crop has a critical a critical stage where they require more water okay so your irrigation management will also depend upon that critical stage for example in wheat 
in wheat we have CRI, right? That is crown root initiation stage. And this stage is considered very critical stage in which we must apply the irrigation. So that is why the time of application of water, that is very important for your good effective irrigation management. Clear? Then method of application of water. It will depend on method of application. For example, if you are doing flooding, then you require more water. If you are going doing irrigation through drip, uh, drip system, then water requirement will be less. Right? So there is a difference. So that is why your management will depend upon method of application of water also. Clear? Now if this is clear to you, moving on to the important terminology related to irrigation. Now we are discussing these terminology and these are very important. You must have the idea what are these and you must know the difference between all these. Right? So first is your seepage. Seepage is basically horizontal flow of water canal. Right? So what happened? Sometime we have a water channel or water, any canal. Right? Water is flowing here. And this is the land. This is the land. What happened? Water horizontally seep out from this canal or water channel, right? So, this horizontal flow of water from the water channel or water canal, that is known as seepage. Correct? So, seepage is basically horizontal flow of water. So, water losses from irrigation channel or canal is mostly due to seepage. So, basically, it is a Water loss, uh, water loss due to horizontal movement of uh, water from the water canal that is your seepage. Clear? Seepage is not only waste of water but also may lead to other problems such as water logging, salination of agricultural land. So due to your seepage, there are many other problems that can arise like water logging. For example, if we have a water canal, right? And there is a continuous seepage of water. So it will lead to water logging around the areas. Okay. And also sometime what will happen due to this water logging, your salt will come out. Okay. Your salt will, uh, will come out, uh, come on the surface of the soil and it will call the, it will cause the salination also problem of salination. So that is why due to seepage, these problem can be seen. And from here you should know what is seepage. Seepage ka matlab kya? That is losses of water from the water canal or water, okay? water canal that is seepage. Then the next, next term is infiltration. What is infiltration? Basically it is the entry of water from upper layer of the soil is called infiltration. Whenever we are applying irrigation right? So when the water is entering into the soil that is your infiltration okay? Water is infiltrating the soil. Clear? Entry of water will be called as infiltration. That's it. यहाँ पे आपको ज़्यादा दिमाग नहीं लगाना है. Soil है, ठीक है? Because बहुत लोग confused होते हैं. Percolation क्या है? Leaching क्या है? Right? So you don't need to get confused here. Just the entry of water. When the water is entering, that is called as infiltration. Clear? So infiltration is just entry of water into the soil. It occur in unsaturated soil. Obviously, unsaturated soil means when a soil has, uh, when soil do not have, uh, all the soil pores are not filled with water. That is your unsaturated soil. So basically, when there is a pore, there is an availability of water to enter. There is a space to water, a space for water to enter. Then only the water will enter the soil, right? So basically, this infiltration happen when we have unsaturated soil means your pores are not filled with water. Your pores are empty then only the water will enter, right? So it will happen in unsaturated soil. Then the speed of infiltration is the measure of amount of water, water absorbed per hour. Basically, what is the amount of water that has been absorbed by this soil, particular soil per hour is infiltration capacity. Basically, infiltration kya measure karta? Infiltration is measuring that what is the amount of water that is being absorbed by soil in a hour. So that is your infiltration, speed of infiltration. Then infiltration characteristic of soil are one of the dominant variables uh, influencing irrigation. Obviously, right, because due to this infiltration, whenever we are getting, giving the irrigation, right, so how, what is the amount of soil, uh, water that is being absorbed by the soil, that will depend, that, at that our irrigation will vary, right. So basically, it will, dip, it will, you know, affect our irrigation process, this infiltration capacity infiltration capacity of soil will uh, depend will affect our irrigation process right then 
we have infiltration rate so basically it is the soil characteristic determining maximum rate at which water can enter in the soil under specific condition including presence of excess water infiltration rate is basically it is a characteristic characteristic of the soil that is determining that what is the maximum rate at which water is infiltrating into the soil even it is in the uh, excess water condition even the soil have the excess water condition under the particular condition what is the maximum rate at which the so water is entering to the soil is your infiltration rate right now i hope all the thing related to infiltration is clear to you basically infiltration is entry of the soil entry kab hogi jab soil is unsaturated theek hai infiltration kya hoga basically kitna amount of soil ja raha hai per hour that is your infiltration uh, and it 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 will uh, it will affect our irrigation process then rate is the maximum rate at which the soil is water is entering to the soil that is your infiltration rate clear then we have percolation another uh, term that is percolation it is downward movement of water through saturated or nearly saturated soil in response to gravity or we can put it as descending motion of infiltrated water through soil and rocks ab ye kya bol diya ma'am aapne right so no need to worry see infiltration is entry of water now water has entered the soil after you know it has saturated the soil has saturated soil has saturated or there is a you know soil which is unsaturated means some pores are filled some pores are unfilled so now also it this water will not stop here forever right it will again move downward so basically this downward movement of water from the soil is percolation within the soil now water has entered the soil that is infiltration has happened now within the soil when the downward movement of this water will happen that is your percolation clear simple that is your percolation so percolation pre represent percolation process represent flow of water from the unsaturated zone to the uh, saturated zone so basically uh, your flow of percolation will uh, represent uh, the flow of water from unsaturated zone to the saturated we, we, we have this zone right here we have water this is the droplets of water now what will happen this we have need the ground water right see this is a saturated zone so here from here also water will percolate down so basically it is the movement of water within the soil movement of water from the unsaturated zone to the saturated zone basically we have ground water below that is a saturated zone so within the soil from unsaturated zone this water is going downward theek okay? hai that is your a percolation clear then we have leaching leaching is the next terminology so basically downward movement of nutrient and soil from the root zone with the water now what is happening uh, uh, with the along with the water your nutrients your salts are also moving downward right we have a soil profile theek hai whenever we apply water first infiltration happened then percolation happened then what is happen along with the water when the water is moving downward your nutrients and salts are also washing away also going down towards uh going all, also going down along with the water so that is your leaching leaching is basically represented for the movement of nutrient and salt from the root zone along with the water from here for leaching you should see these terms theek okay? hai movement of nutrients and salt from the root zone you it's not like the uh, movement of uh, nutrient and uh, salt from the upper zone to the lower zone it's not like We these are removing these are getting lost from the root zone. ठीक है root के आस पास भी नहीं है root से नीचे जा रहे हैं because that is the loss right क्योंकि हमें nutrients चाहिए roots के लिए but जब वो roots से root zone से नीचे जा रहे हैं due to the movement of water that is your leaching clear now we have next saturation capacity so it basically it is the maximum water holding capacity of the soil saturation capacity saturation I have already told you when all your macro pores and micro pores are filled ठीक है सो बेसिकली दैट इज द मैक्सिमम वाटर होल्डिंग कैपेसिटी व्हेन ऑल द पोर्स ऑफ सॉइल आर फिल्ड दैट इज मैक्सिमम वाटर होल्डिंग कैपेसिटी ऑफ सॉइल एंड दैट इज योर सैचुरेशन कैपेसिटी क्लियर नाउ आई होप ऑल दीज आर क्लियर टू यू मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट दैट इज वी हैव नेक्स्ट फील्ड कैपेसिटी सो नाउ सी आई विल एक्सप्लेन दिस थ्रू एग्जाम्पल फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई हैव अ फील्ड राइट सो फर्स्ट आई गो फॉर द इरीगेशन एंड नाउ वट विल हैपन ऑल द पोर्स विल बी filled with the uh, all the micro and macro pores will be filled with the water that is our saturation capacity now our my field is in the saturation capacity now this water is not going to stuck there forever it will flow down right so after two or three days what will happen 
these water will uh, this water will flow down from the macro pores because macro pores are bigger in size so first of all what will happen the water will flow downward from this macro pores and it will remain only in the micro pores right and when the water is uh, lost from the macro pores and is in the uh, is only in the micro pores that condition is your filled capacity clear so basically after two three days of uh, irrigation drainage of cavitational water has become very slow and uh, relatively stable and here the large pores are filled with air and micro pores are filled with water that is your field capacity and it is considered as upper limit of water availability to plant clear so basically field capacity is upper limit of water that is available to the plant Clear here on your all the macro pores and they have filled with the they they are they are emptied they have the water has gone down and they are filled with the air spaces only the micro pores are filled and now this water is available to the plant so that is why it is called as upper limit of water availability to plant clear now we have next permanent wilting point basically the permanent wilting point wilting point uh, concept is of Briggs and Snaz okay so they they have uh, given this concept and they have utilized dwarf sunflower uh, as an indicator plant and it is the moisture content at which the plant has no longer in uh, no longer obtain enough moisture to meet the requirement now what happened after the micro pores are filled now what uh, we have reached the field capacity right so now what will happen crop will take the moisture from the micro pores okay the crop will start taking the moisture there will be a moisture loss through evaporation also and so on so what will happen a condition will come then uh, the uh, the there is no water available in the micro pores for the crop and now the plant will wilt right so basically your permanent wilting point is the condition when there is no water remain in the macro pores for the uh, plant and it will wilt until and unless we are applying the water okay for example we have uh, reached this wilting point and plant has wilted if we again apply the water the plant will stand okay this plant will regain from the wilting condition so that is your permanent wilting point and it is the lower limit of available water to the plant clear so basically that is your permanent wilting point now i hope this is clear to you moving on to the next wilting coefficient basically this is a term related to the percentage of moisture in the root zone at the permanent wilting point check your of plant so basically at the permanent wilting point the percentage of water that is available in the root zone that is your wilting coefficient clear then we have available water so basically available water is the max moisture available for the maximum plant use that is your available water we have the water in the soil but for the plant what is the maximum available water that is your available water okay basically it is arrived by subtracting your field capacity and permanent wilting point okay i have already told you we have saturated the uh, we have saturated the field then after two three three days field capacity will come uh, to the field capacity uh, till the field capa uh, from the field capacity till the permanent wilting point the water that is available is your available water okay because that is the water that is available for the crop and crop is utilizing that water right so whenever we are subtracting the field capacity to the permanent wilting point that is the available water or to the crop clear then we have ultimate wilting point basically as the name suggests ultimate wilting point means from from here plant will not be able to regain from the wilting means after that we if we apply the water the plant will not regain its uh, its uh, turgidity okay it will permanently permanently wilt and die clear so that is your ultimate wilting point clear permanent wilting point or ultimate wilting point mein difference hai ki permanent wilting point mein when we are giving water it will regain its turgidity but in ultimate wilting point it will not clear so that is the thing then we have other so soil moisture tension so basically what is this this is the measure of tenacity with water with which water is held in the so basically the tenacity the tension with which the water is held in the soil is your soil moisture tension clear as the name suggests soil moisture tension means the soil uh, the moisture that is uh, present in the soil with uh, that is held in the soil with a certain tension so that tension is known as the tenacity is known as your soil moisture tension basically it is the force per unit area that must be exerted to remove the soil for example how we can we measure it we have a soil that has a water in it and now the force that we have to apply to remove that water from the soil is your soil moisture tension clear so that is soil moisture tension then we have soil water potential then 
it is an indication of the tendency of tendency of soil water to move uh, is expressed as soil water potential basically soil the soil have a movement in the uh, soil profile right they can go uh, so the water sorry the water move in the uh, the soil water move uh, you know from upper zone to the lower zone or it uh, from vertically it move down vertically or horizontally right so basically it requires some tendency it requires some force so that is your soil water potential okay it is the it indicate the tendency of soil water to move is called soil water potential basically it is defined as the work water can do uh, as to it to move from present state to the reference state okay for example here we have a water it it will move to a reference state that is zero state means when it will achieve here it will be here then it do not it will not move okay it, there is no force applied on this so basically that is your soil water potential clear then moving on to the next topic that is irrigation project which i was telling you that it is important because two questions has been asked from this uh, this topic okay so basically irrigation project is an agriculture establishment which can supply controlled amount of water to land growing crop okay we are going for we are developing any project whenever we are developing any project any irrigation project for the you know supply of water to the uh, land that is your irrigation project clear so for example we are establishing dam we are establishing a lake pond anything that is uh, related that is that has been established for you know giving the any project that has been established for supplying water to the crop land that is your irrigation project clear then irrigation project mainly consists of hydraulic structure collect from uh, that collect water from the so, uh, source convey and deliver to the field okay basically it is in a hydraulic structure for example your da dams okay so there are dams which are irrigation which are uh, known as irrigation project which are uh, which are you build to convey the water to the fields clear they are your irrigation project now these irrigation project are classified according to the amount that has been uh, spent on uh, you know building that particular uh, dam or the cultural command area that is irrigate that it is irrigating so basically cultural command area is the amount of area that is being irrigated by that project clear so that is the cultural command area so basically we have three major irrigation project that are very important isko yaad kar lo because question has been asked from here and it can be seen that it might come in your future ex future uh, exam also right so if we have if we talk about major irrigation project so amount here is four, more than 50 million rupees and the area that is cultural command area that it is irrigating is more than 10000 hectare then medium irrigation project is of 2.5 million to 50 million rupees and the cultural command area is 2000 to 10000 hectare then we have minor irrigation project that is less than 2.5 million project million rupees project and it is irrigating your 2000 hectare cultural command area clear so this is very important <coughs> बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है यू मस्ट नो अबाउट दीज थ्री प्रोजेक्ट अमाउंट एंड द कल्चरल कमांड एरिया दैट दे आर इरीगेटिंग क्लियर नाउ मूविंग ऑन टू द क्वेश्चन सो लेट्स प्रैक्टिस फ्यू क्वेश्चन वट एवर वी हैव डिस्कस सो फार द फर्स्ट इज विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग रिफर टू द एंट्री ऑफ वाटर फ्रॉम द अपर लेयर ऑफ द सॉइल नाउ एंट्री ऑफ वाटर इसी शब्द इसी से आपको स्ट्राइक हो जाना चाहिए कि एंट्री ऑफ वाटर इज योर इनफिल्ट्रेशन क्लियर देन वी हैव नेक्स्ट विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग रिफर टू द downward movement of nutrient and salt from the root zone i have told you downward movement of nutrient and salt and that is from the root zone that is your leaching clear then third question is which of the following refers to the maximum water holding capacity of the soil where your macro pores and micro pores are filled with water so what it will be it will be your saturation capacity okay then we have For major irrigation project, this was the question of Nabard. Okay, so in Nabard ka question hai. So major irrigation project, the for major irrigation project, the cultural command area is we have discussed this. For major irrigation project, the cultural command area is more than ten thousand hectare. Clear? Then the next question is also from the Nabard, which is where what is the criteria? for project to come under the minor irrigation scheme your options are given and right answer here is both a and b so basically cultural command area is of 2000 hectare and cost here is 2.5 million clear so they both are criteria of minor irrigation project so that will answer will be both a and b clear 
then uh, this is the practice question for you you have to tell me the concept of available water is given by which of the following scientist and you have to answer this question and do let me know the answer of this question in the comment box okay so that was all but before some uh, closing the video i have announcement that we have launched a comprehensive nabard guidebook for you which is your one step solution to all your queries regarding nabard and nabard examination not only that it will provide you the decoded syllabus as well as pyqs which you can refer to see that what kind of questions are being asked in nabard grade a and also it will give you the strategy and resources to crack this nabard grade a examination and that too for free yes you can get this guidebook for free and for that you have to go to the description box click on the link register yourself and avail this guidebook for yourself theek hai so with that uh, that was all for this video i hope you have enjoyed the video thank you thank you so much